Uh, hey everybody, if you don't know about DeepGram, DeepGram is a company that does uh, audio AI. So we've been around for nine years now, um, so ancient and AI years. Um, but uh, so we, we brought end-to-end uh, -end deep learning to uh, speech recognition, and uh, our most recent product is a TTS product that we released back in uh, December. And so you can use our API uh, on-prem, you can use it in the cloud, you can um, adapt models to a specific acoustic environment. I just came from a drive-through that has all sorts of crazy things happening in it, like cars running and Amazon trucks backing up and all of that, and we uh, uh, like automatically adapt models for that kind of thing, et cetera. Um, so anyway, if, if, if you don't know about us, that's what we do. Uh, also, we're a research-led company, uh, so what that means is we figure out fundamental things through our research team and then we bring them to uh, the market as soon as possible through our product team. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, everything is moving at breakneck speed, but a lot of the things that uh, folks enjoy now with like really fast, accurate, real-time speech recognition, if you have any devices um, out there, I was just talking with a founder a couple minutes ago, uh, uh, most of them use DeepGram behind the scenes. So, uh, just uh, that's that's who we are, and uh, we help companies build truly conversational experiences. And the bar that we set for ourselves, and we set from the beginning, um, but it takes a long time to get there, is uh, what can a human do? And we ask this all the time in our product meetings, et cetera, and, and our research team. Um, and that helps uh, guide us toward uh, what's possible. Um, because neural networks really do work in a way that is similar to a human. They can learn by example, et cetera. And so you have to think about how can we formulate uh, this problem in a way that uh, this, this machine can actually learn from it. And so we spend all of our, all of our time thinking that way. And uh, so arguments about like how many neurons does it have? Is it equivalent to a mouse or a cat or a person or whatever? We're talking about that kind of thing all the time. Um, and it's amazing to see um, the progress that has happened over the last decade and we're at a, uh, an amazing time right now. So um, one thing to keep in mind is that there was like a previous version of voice AI and uh, it was kind of, you know, voice AI 1.0. Think Siri, think things like that where it was slow, it wasn't super accurate, um, there wasn't really a real time feel to it. Um, and it, it, you could try to ask it anything but it wouldn't really, um, it only answer in a very specific domain. So now with the, the next version of voice AI, there's, uh, it's open-ended, and a lot of what's driving that is LLMs. You can put any text into it, and uh, depending on how the model is trained, you can output any text. And so if you're having a uh, voice AI conversation, you can take the audio, turn it, uh, using speech-to-text software, turn it into text, inject it into an LLM model, get text out the other side, and then use a text-to-speech model in order to uh, produce audio. And uh, part of the, this now voice AI 2.0 is how fast can you do that in, in how smart of a way can you do that so that the agent actually like does what it's supposed to, and then how expressive does it sound? And so we'll talk about that a little bit, but you know this is uh, the, the type of process, speech, uh, like speech to text to an LLM, I would just internally call that text to text. <laughs> Who cares if it's, a, if it's a transformer model or whatever it is, but uh, you transform speech to text, then text to text, then text to speech, and you keep that loop going. Um, and I would say uh, what we're, what we're, what we're seeing right now, and we, we might, you know, the folks out there might say there's a big hype cycle, we're at the peak of it or something. I would say, uh, hang on a second, this is more like 1910, you, feel, you see the first cars in the street or something like that. Um, really, it's just a tiny thing that's happening right now, and there's gonna be a massive 100x uh, explosion in the next like decade for uh, voice AI, text, et cetera. It's, uh, AI is gonna be everywhere. The way I would think about this, and you know, encourage others to think about it this way, is there is there was like an agricultural revolution that took like a thousand, two thousand years to happen. Then there was an industrial revolution that took like maybe 250, 300 years to happen. Then there was an information revolution that took like 75 years to happen. See the trend? <laughs> the intelligence revolution is going to take like 25, maybe 30 years to happen. And so if you thought tech companies were fast before, AI companies have to move three times faster. Um, so uh, anyway, this is how it works today. There's a um, speech-to-text system. You can see in there there's an, an LLM or a text-to-text -text system, and uh, then a text-to-speech system. And each of these systems works fairly independently, um, but the state of the art works very quickly, and they have high efficacy or accuracy. So 
speech to text now, from, from even just five or you know, eight years ago, it used to be maybe 75% accuracy or somewhere around there. Uh, now it's like over 90, and that over 90 uh, really makes a big difference. Also, speech to text used to be maybe two to five second delay for real time. Now it's like 100 milliseconds or maybe 200 milliseconds um, with the high accuracy. And also you can run it on-prem and you can co-locate all these services together. Uh, actually, the, the founder of Daily, I just saw him roaming around. They just came out with a blog post showing that you can do the entire uh, voice AI round trip conversation in, le in less than 500 milliseconds using DeepGram for the speech to text, Llama for the TTT, and then uh, DeepGram for the text to speech. Uh, but nevertheless, that's what a human responds in. It's between like 400 to 600 milliseconds in turn taking. So um, you, can, you can do all that here, but there is a piece that's missing, which is um, if you, these are all, like I just said, speech to text models, text to text models, text to speech. They're not passing along any context throughout the conversation. So the, what, what this ends up with is a few, a few spots that you're like, hang on a second. Um, it's not really getting exactly what I'm saying. Um, and maybe that only happens 10% of the interactions or 20% of the interactions. Or what I really mean is like 10 or 20% of the turns. Um, but the way that you combat that is by uh, adding in context. And so um, the, that's, that's what this, this view is right here. Uh, it looks like a really subtle change. But instead of there being speech to text models now, where it just takes an audio and it puts out text, it will take an audio and context. So think promptable, but not necessarily text promptable. It could be promptable with anything. It could be promptable with other audio. It could be promptable with images. It could be promptable with documents. Um, it could be promptable with the previous turn of the conversation. Um, but what that gives you is it gives that speech to text model context. Um, when you send something to a speech to text model right now, it actually has to, it's kind of amazing what it's able to do. It knows nothing about the conversation and then it's just thrown into like a basketball game and it has to transcribe everything you know, quickly and, and with just like a few seconds of context and then do a really good job. Um, what happens when you give that model the entire context of the conversation up until that point? It gets way more accurate. It, but it's not just about the accuracy, because the next step in that is once you, uh, once you, pa you can pass that context along, you can pass the original input context along, but you can also have your speech to text model output context as well. And that can output text that is human readable, it can output audio, it can output images, it can output just embeddings, um, which people are now familiar with as like just a, a vector embedding. Um, and so that can carry the state of the conversation um, throughout the entire thing. And I just want to point out, this is not how systems are built right now. Um, but in the next year, this is how they're going to be built. And this is when things are going to flip into like, holy shit, this, is, this feels like human. And because once that text to text is contextual, from the audio, it knows it's hearing an angry person or a happy person. It knows that the conversation is flowing quickly or slowly. It knows that there's you know light music playing in the background. It knows all this stuff, right? And so that text-to-text -text model can now generate the appropriate response. But it's not just about the text that it generates. It, ge it generates its own context, right? So it can say to the text-to-speech model, hey, I need you to say this softly. I need you to say it slowly. You know, I'm speaking very quickly right now, right? But uh, I need you to say it slowly. I need you to say it in an authoritative tone. You know, that kind of thing. And uh, then when the text-to-speech model generates that audio, it will say, I, tr I tried to generate it this way. I sounded like this. I think I did a good job, et cetera. That's context that's going to get passed to the next turn in the conversation. And so all this context is going to be passed around. We call it contextual AI internally at DeepGram. But uh, this is what the next generation of these models is going to look like. And this is actually the innovation that's going to make it feel like a human. Because the speed part is taken care of. The accuracy part is taken care of. Now it's all about context. Um, I know there's, uh, to preempt any follow-up questions <laughs> about uh, like a, a multimodal model or a speech-to-speech -speech model, Sure, absolutely. It's uh, you may mold or like meld some of these together. You may put them all together. The problem with putting them all together is it's not as controllable. So we we are the largest uh, speech to text API in the world now, but that's mostly because of businesses using us to power like Spotify, to power food ordering, to power um, call centers and that kind of thing. And they need controllability. In, in what they're doing. So if you just give like an open-ended prompt to a speech-to-speech -speech model and just say like go to town, 
that's not the kind of experience that like a bank wants. You know, they want a little more control. They want to maybe put a whole bunch of compute power in the speech to text to make sure that they get everything uh, precisely right. And then the text to text doesn't actually have to be all that big because they're just doing a few, they're, they're, they're just doing a few things like helping them reset their password or something like that. And then they want the text to speech to be like really expressive, but like calm and only a single voice. And so these are all gonna be kind of compartmentalized um, because that brings us to the COGS conversation, the cost of goods sold. Um, right now, a lot of people probably feel that. You know, AI is kind of expensive, but uh, it doesn't have to be if you use the right tools and you use the right services that focus on uh, cost of goods sold. And so, um, and if you, if you choose the right size for each component in the stack. So, um, the, so in the future, that's what it's going to look like. Um, I'm trying to hurry through this because I uh, want to leave room for questions. It's already been like 14 minutes um, or maybe 12 minutes or so. But uh, uh, I'll, I'll give you just a flash of like what the future will look like. But um, one thing that we're doing as you know, a platform at DeepGram, um, we think, hey, if, you, if, you want, if you're doing anything in audio, you should be thinking about DeepGram. Maybe you don't use this for every piece of it, but you should be thinking, hey, if I want low latency, real-time speech to text, you should definitely be thinking about DeepGram. If you want to be, uh, if you want to be using low latency text to speech, uh, definitely at least talk to us. Um, that's a new product for us, but you know the next version will be even even more expressive. But right now, it's I would say uh, better than like Amazon, uh, Microsoft, etc. Than their neural models, not quite as good as Eleven Labs. Um, but uh, but anyway, the next product coming out for us, which I want to give everybody the chance to. Uh, try out or apply to for our preview is our voice AI agent, uh, which is a full full stack where we put everything together. So you could, if you want, you can use your own API keys and use your own um, LLMs. Um, but uh, also, you could have it all put together with DeepGram. And this helps with reducing that latency. So you get your um, turn taking down to a very short, you know, 300 milliseconds, 500 milliseconds, 600 milliseconds, rather than like 800 or 1500 or something if you tried to piece them together yourself. Um, and if you want to get access to this uh, voice AI agent API, we have a QR code here. Um, and we have some folks in the back too. If you saw a workshop, I think two days ago with Damien, he gave an awesome workshop. He's in the back, you could talk to him about this, um, but also just feel free to screenshot this or go to the link now or whatever it is. Um, also uh, at, at DeepGram, we um, give out uh, $250 in credit. So anybody can uh, try it out. Thanks everyone. Thank you.